Uh, you held an internship uh, position at Oxford University Innovation, uh, where you worked on quantum memory stores. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us about what are quantum uh, memory stores and what have you learned during your time there? <clears throat> Right. Uh, so, after the university innovation was, uh, so the idea was it was a start of an, it was a start of boot camp or start of accelerator kind of things. And the way it works is OUI controls all the IP in Oxford, right? Mm -hmm. And when they have a lot of IP, they try to commercialize it. And this program was called Step, was designed to basically get students in mm -hmm. and give them an IP and be like, okay, here's an IP. Yeah. How do you commercialize this? Or come up with a startup and commercialize it. So, that was the plan. So, it was a lot more startup focused than it was technical mm -hmm. focused. Mm -hmm. Um, even then, obviously, I went in and I chose an IP that I think I would like, was interested by. It's quantum memory stores developed here in Oxford. Yeah. Um, so quantum memory stores. Um, so memory stores are basically just registered, but with a bit of memory. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially a normal register, but it um, it exhibits a uh, register score, so you can trace back some of its memory. Right. And the way this particular memory store was implemented was using something called quantum dots. Mm -hmm, yeah. The exact feature isn't uh, important, but the idea was because of its because of the way it was implemented, mm -hmm. it was very resistant, very resistant to like some sort of cyber security attacks, mm -hmm. and it was a physical implementation of a, of a physically unknowing device. Mm -hmm. So the idea was obviously when I saw this idea that this could have a lot of applications and something like unique signatures or. Uh, anti counterfeit. So, the anti counterfeit is what we went with. Mm -hmm. And the whole month was me and a bunch of other friends preparing the startup. Mm -hmm. So, looking at the technicals, seeing how this would actually work alongside the real world mm -hmm. um, technologies, and putting that as a startup to investors. For example, if you have quantum memory stores, how do you put that memory store onto a, let's say, scannable NFC chip? Oh. Put it on pharmaceutical. That was a major market mm -hmm. we were looking at because counterfeit and pharmaceuticals is a pain point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you scan them and you can scan them as them, does it actually improve quality of security and stuff like that? And then we push the whole product to the VC. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the most painful route because um, there was still a bit of challenges in the actual implementation and the IP was a few years away from actual scalable development. Mm -hmm. But I think what I learned from that experience was a lot more on the startup side than the technical side, which was just the, how to work in a team. I think working with, and this was a team that I've never met before. So I was working with five other people who I've never met. Right. And I started from, from day one, it was just hustling because mm -hmm. we have we have about three weeks to push an entire stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the biggest experience, how to handle a team. Mm -hmm. And I was, in, I was the youngest one there. I was in my first year. Yeah. Everyone else was around ethers or fourth year. Mm -hmm. Despite that, I was the only one with the physics background. So I was in charge of the technical part of it. So understanding the technology. Mm -hmm. So having that having that level of responsibility with people who are senior to me, mm -hmm. I think that taught me a lot. Right. And being able to communicate it with them, to be able to carve my own ground, just simply that like, yeah, mm -hmm. I respect you because you know you, you mm -hmm. have a lot of experience. Yes. Yeah. That was quite interesting. Perfect. 